Hi, Kinesiology 3010. Welcome to part two of our inferential statistics chapter. Okay, um, so today we're going to talk about correlations um, and difference based statistical tests. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of go a little bit deeper into um, correlations, t tests, and using hypothesis based testing. So um, we can really categorize these two as relationship and difference based tests. Okay, in a Relationship-based tests, we have one group or one set of participants, one sample. And to test a difference, we have to compare um, two samples or two groups comparatively rather than just having one group. We have to compare two separate groups um, based on our independent variable. Okay, when we use a correlation, we examine relationships. When we use a t-test, we examine differences. A correlation between two variables does not indicate causation, but a t-test may identify a cause. Okay, because we're using some kind of independent variable intervention, we're changing something to see if that change has an effect on the group compared to the group that does not have that effect. Okay, so now there are two different types of hypotheses. Okay, so now we're going to go into testing these hypotheses. So two different types of hypotheses. We have the null and the alternative hypothesis, or our HO and H1. Okay, a null hypothesis states that there is no significant relationship or no significant difference between variables or between groups. So this is the statement that there is not. Null, not. I think this is our not hypothesis. No, nothing's happening. Okay, the null hypothesis is always about the population, but not the sample. So we're saying that in the world, in all people, all of this type of group, there is no significant relationship or difference on the variables or groups. Okay, this is our assumption that our null hypothesis is true. We're assuming that there is nothing. Okay, we're assuming that there is no truth, kind of like saying innocent until proven guilty. Okay, so this is our, and we think there's nothing going to happen. Okay, so this is our, or our equal sign, okay? Um, nothing is going to happen. Okay, so our null hypothesis states that there is no significant relationship or no significant difference between the variables or between the groups. So for a correlational test, it would be there's no significant relationship between the variables for a difference group or for a difference hypothesis it would state that there is no significant difference between groups okay, understand how to write a null hypothesis you'll need to do it for this class okay so star this section okay hypotheses may or may not be rejected okay so we'll get a little bit further into what we mean by this okay so we have a test difference here where we're saying which training approach is better to improve swimmers' cardiovascular endurance, interval training or long distance training? So let's think about back to our independent and dependent variables. Okay, the difference in dependent variables with the, with the effects of the de on the dependent variables based on the independent variable. So what we're thinking here is which approach interval or long distance training or independent variables or dependent variable is cardiovascular endurance okay, so we're changing training type and measuring endurance okay so the two groups of swimmers we have long duration group and then we have interval group okay um, these are our independent variables and we use the 800 meter swim race to determine cardiovascular endurance that's our measurement or our test and we measure endurance okay so we're comparing if these two independent variables if these two different types of training will have an effect on the dependent variable what we measure which is our cardiovascular endurance okay, so our null hypothesis is that there is no difference in cardiovascular endurance between swimmers who use long duration compared to those who use interval this is saying that there is no effect. So that will mean that they both will equal out, or the effects on cardiovascular endurance from long duration methods will equal 
would be the same as those from interval methods. So there is no effect. The change in modality or the change in intervention will not have an effect on what we measure. Okay, that's our null hypothesis or our assumption that there is no difference. Okay, and we will use a t-test. I'm just going to keep giving you this more information. We'll get into why later. And we use a t-test to compare these two groups. Now let's use a relationship study example. So we have a question is students age significantly related to study hours. Our null hypothesis is that there is no significant relationship between student age and study hours. So students age and study hours are two dependent variables in the same group of students. We always know that there is no independent variable in a relationship study. So that's one of our key indicators. They are, our notes are red flags to us. There's only dependent, there's two dependent variables. Must be a relationship study because there's two dependent and no independent. If we have an independence and a dependent, we have a relate or a um, we have a difference-based study. So here's another example. Our research question is there are sixth grade boys fitness performance um, better than sixth grade girls um, fitness performance. In other words, we're going to compare the scores between boys and girls. So independent variable is sex and then our dependent variable is fitness performance. So our null hypothesis here is that there's no significant difference in fitness test or dependent variable between boys and girls. So boys and girls are the two different groups that we're going to compare the measurements with. The alternative hypothesis is the statement that there is a relationship or there is a difference. So it's the opposite of the null hypothesis. And this never contains an equal. We're saying that they are not the same. The groups are different, okay? Or there is a relationship, something is happening. Okay, they're not, there's not a watch, there's not nothing happening. So here's our, our alternative example from our swimmers example earlier. So an alternative hypothesis would be that there is a significant difference in swimmers cardiovascular endurance between those who use long duration method and interval training method. Okay. So there, our other one would be there is a significant relationship between study hours and students age or there is a significant difference in fitness between sixth grade boys and sixth grade girls. These would all be our examples of alternative hypothesis. We are making a guess or a hypothesis, an educated guess, that there is something going on here. Okay, this is the purpose of our research, is that there is something going on, and we want to know if that is true or not. Is our hypothesis correct? So we'll go for another one. Okay, our null hypothesis for this situation, there's no significant relationship between smoke and lung cancer. Our research hypothesis or our alternative hypothesis, there is a significant relationship between smoking and lung cancer. So the null, there's no. The alternative, there is. Okay, so hypothesis statements need to align with our research designs. So we have to use the correct hypothesis wording and formatting for our research design. Then we select the statistical approach that fits that statistical or that research design. Okay. Here's a little cheat sheet here. Um, if we're using descriptive statistics, it's like mean, standard deviation, percentage, frequency, all of those that we went over earlier. Uh, then we have our relationships. We use correlations. A relationship correlation, put those two together in your brain. And then if the, we're looking at differences, we use t-test or ANOVA. Okay. So keys there, uh, we're looking for significant relationships with a correlation, significant differences with t-tests or ANOVAs. So let's throw back to what we did in the last lecture. Okay, we had our research question of whether vitamin C pills daily make people live longer. Okay, one part of the group took the vitamin pill, um, the other took a placebo. And then what we wanted to check is if lifespan was different, or the dependent variable of lifespan was different as we manipulated independent variable, which was use or non-use of the vitamin C pill. Our, alter, or our null hypothesis for this situation is that there is no significant difference in lifespan between those who take vitamin C pills and those who do not take vitamin C pills. Okay. Um, so there's a significant difference in what we measure between 
the variable one and the, or the category, the group one and group two. So no difference in lifespan between vitamin C and placebo. So let's look at one for relationships. There is no significant relationship between measurement one and measurement two or age and study hours in this situation. See how this is starting to work out? And we have kind of a template, a, a structure to help us accurately create our research design or statistical approach in our hypothesis. Okay, so the probability and the hypothesis testing. Okay, statistics is the science of making an educated guess. So we're taking a sample and, and creating a possibility that uh, we might be right and that our that our hypothesis or our educated guess is correct. Okay, um, the possibility that we want or our, our confidence is 95%, which means throw back to our alpha level, 5% probability of type one error. Okay, so we want we want to be 90 with our with what, with what we're doing, we're trying to get 95% sure, 90%, 95% confident that we did not make a type one error and what we found is true. Okay, that probability is our p value. So put a star next to p value. And the p-value of that hypothesis test is the probability of getting that value um, to be outside or extreme compared to kind of observed by chance. And, or the probability of wrongly rejecting the null hypothesis if it is true or the chance of making a type 1 error. Okay, the p-value is related to the alpha level. The p-value is the probability of making a type one error of the specific research study, the statistical test that we did. The alpha level is what we compare our p-value to. Okay, so p-value tells us the probability within that test. The alpha level is our set probability that we are allowed to have. So think back to what we saw before. Okay, the rejection regions are where we reject the null hypothesis if it is outside of that alpha level. Okay, so the p-value is often reported because if our p-value is less than 0 0.05 or less than our alpha level, we can say that we are at least 95% confident that what we saw is true. Okay, if our p-value is less, it would, tells us that we have even more confidence. So if our p-value is less than 0 0.01, we are 99% confident that we saw a difference or saw a relationship and did not make an error. So that means that our, um, our chance of making an error was extremely low. So we can be quite confident that what we saw was true. And so we can look at it here as an alpha level of 0 0.05 is a 5% chance of making a type one error. So we want our p-value to be below the alpha level. So p must be less than or smaller than alpha for us to say there is a significant difference or a significant relationship. And the p-value is compared to our significance level or alpha level. If it's smaller, then we can reject the null hypothesis. This is what we're trying to do with statistics. I know it sounds like we're just going around and around with words, okay, but the null hypothesis is what we are testing in our statistical approach. The alternative hypothesis is what we are testing in our research design. So our null hypothesis is what our statistics are trying to find. Okay, our statistical test is trying to say, can we reject the null hypothesis? If the null hypothesis, or the null hypothesis can only be rejected if the p-value is less than the alpha level. So if p is less than 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. Okay. The smaller the p-value, the more um, that means that our null hypothesis is not true or like, unlikely to be true. Smaller p-value, more convinced that we can reject it. Okay, so less chance of making a type one error. Okay, um, so the p-value could also be equal to zero that there is no chance we are completely true. Okay, so what I want you to review on your own um, make sure that you can answer these questions. Okay, what is a type one error? What is a type two error? 
what is the alpha level what does it mean and what do we set at it we're set it up for our research in kinesiology and then what is the probability or the p value be able to describe them and how they coordinate with each other hint hint this might be a question on your exam okay to have to um, compare contrast and define these terms hint hint wink wink nudge nudge it's going to be on your exam okay um, so let's go more into that process okay um, into how we're trying to go about this whole hypothesis test with our statistics okay quick first our notation um, mu or this is that little u that looks like it has a little dangle on the front okay is the mean of the population x bar is our mean of the sample okay so we assume that the population mean age is 50 in this example so we look at the population we say the population is 50. okay and then we take a sample of that population take the mean of that sample okay then we compare that mean of the sample to the mean of the population okay if we say that it's no it's likely or is that likely if um, the population average is 50. No, it's not likely, so we reject the null hypothesis saying that we our assumption that it's 50 is not true. Okay, so our, re our reasoning for this is it's unlikely that we would get a sample value that is way on the ends of our distribution or really far away from what is normal. Okay, so if the, in this case, if the null hypothesis is true, then the, po the population average would be 50. Okay, if the fact were this, okay, our chance that we are getting a value very low is, is we have that very low chance, but we, we don't have no chance. So if we find that it's not, we would reject the null hypothesis. So um, we'll explain a little bit further. The previous example, if the population average age was 50 what is the probability that we would have a sample with a mean of 20 and okay, that may depend on the alpha level we set okay so if we set an alpha level that is too high we might have a chance of making a type 1 error and saying that it's um, there is truth when in fact it is not or it's too low and we can't find that that difference so can you explain the relationship between type one error, type two error, or type one error, alpha level, and p-value? This is something you should be able to do based on this lecture and the previous lecture. Okay, what is a type one error? What is the alpha level? What is the p-value? And how do they all interact with each other? That is your study study question um, that you should be able to answer after reviewing these lectures. All right. Thank you and have a great day.